to, there's no actual school to teach you the process kind of got to learn you know hands on you know as the steps progress you know what i mean especially in hip hop and uh you know i wouldn't take nothing back to be honest with you you know the good times and bad times make up what's happening right now you know for better for worse and shit like that and for me i consider you know all that stuff you know that wasn't so great learning experiences as opposed to you know some negative shit where you know to complain about something because who's gonna listen who wants to hear you complain exactly yeah you know what i'm saying it, nobody wants to hear that so if i'm i'm complaining the, that means i'm bitter about some of the losses i took so you know i'm never bitter about that because a loss is a learning experience if you if you look at it the right way so you know I, i'm good you know it, it's helped me all those things help me progress to where i am now which allows me to be in two bands and flip styles the way that you know i'm able to do from one show to the other and from one st creating one style and creating the other with the other guys you know what i mean it all that stuff led up to where i'm at now so you know uh, you take that if you're passionate about what it is i mean it's like going up there and having a routine and some of the routine is hitting and some of it you know you need to work on when you when you go home right or the fucking shit bombs out like you could you could say oh man i ain't i ain't going back up on the mic i fucking bombed out or you be a, you go back and create something else and come back out and fucking tear their asses up again you know it just depends on how much passion you got for it and you know i've always had a lot of passion for music you know before i was even you know creating it with my bros you know um so i for me it's it's all about that you know still loving to do it do taking risks you know that uh normally other people won't take creatively stuff like that man i i, I love shit like that because it's a challenge let's be strictly honest here i pretty much booked the podcast with lee somebody calls me i talk to lee lee talks to me we put his name down and we see where we're at with that person you know right. and uh it's funny that, that because of my touring schedule and then i was trying to write a sitcom Tuesdays were always being rough for me, plus an acting class, plus the baby. Yeah. And finally, when I freed up, uh, so many people mentioned you to me that it was overwhelming until I said, let me go down there and see what this uh, podcast is about. And from the minute I walked into your studio, your, your, you know, what time you got there, your, you know, your gentleman, the staff you had, I was very... Uh, taken back by you by what you were doing oh, thanks uh I, I i love to talk you know what i'm saying i, I still got that residue cocaine from 30 years ago <laughs> <laughs> it comes up every once in a while i sweat every once in a while and you hit like a cocaine rock that got caught right. in a fat thing <laughs> and i can't there's nothing i can say to you because i'm listening to you and you're exactly on the money but what i admire about you the most is what happened to the spin doctors I, listen, I'm just acting. What what yeah. was the song they sang? Dear, dear, what did I adore you? Now come yeah, on, baby. Uh, 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 this time, yeah, that's uh, karaoke now. Right. Okay. So if, if you <laughs> and now I am not putting down the spin doctors. No, by no means. They had big hits. They had big hits, and then whatever happened, one guy became a carpenter. The singer hated the piano player. You're the you're the type of dude that reinvents himself every ninety days. And then when that's how you keep yourself fresh. <clears throat> I had to go to my agent two months ago and go, listen, I don't want to hear about another date on the road again. He's like, what are you talking about? You're selling out. That's not the point. That's not the point. See, that's what you motherfuckers are wrong. And then, yeah, you make a little change and then you buy a house. And guess what? Now you're in debt. Yeah. Now you're doing something that you used to love, but it became a job. Yeah. When you choose an art as a career, you want to get up tip top magoo and attack it every day. It's a lot of it's a fine line. I I tell you, and I know you're gonna tell me when it was me, you, this dude, and fat fucking Joe in a garage with no money. Those are the best times we had when we were just rapping, 
and it was just us. We were making some good music. Also, something came in that was called money and pressure, and we adjusted, we adapt. That's what we do. But it fucks up the main thing of what you're doing. What you're doing, you're not letting the money get in the way. You're switching it up. You're switching it up. I'm sitting here in awe because I have a hard time raising a daughter, loving my wife, because if you know if you don't give your wife love, right. then that's a complete different thing. I had to take it from a massage yesterday. 60 bucks, two Chinese people. <laughs> one rubs her, one rubs me, and we hold hands together. <laughs> they put rocks on your neck. Right but on. you know what? It puts a smile on your face, and that's yeah. an hour and a half of my time. I got the podcast, and then you got to go on the road. Right. We don't have, I don't have all that shit. I wish I had the time and energy. You know, we make a road. We, I don't know where you live, and I don't give a fuck. But you got to get on that 405 today. Oh, you yeah. see, when they put a picture on Twitter oh, yeah. of the 405, that they don't know how we live with that. That's, That's every serious. day, though. That's every fucking day. That's serious. So you going to visit somebody is four it's, fucking hours. Yeah. The other day I had a meeting. And that's just getting there. That's just getting there. Two, two days, Friday. I had a meeting, and on the way back, Lee called me. He goes, how'd it go? I go, we could have done it on the phone. <laughs> I had to go to Wilshire. <laughs> we could have done it on the phone. <laughs> this is why we have Skype. <laughs> and this is why I admire you, because you find time to, wait a second, not just tour, people. If, if all I had to do every weekend was go out and say the same jokes I've been saying for 10 years and nobody would say nothing, that's what I would do and it'd be easy. But I know you're the type of dude that wants to create. You want to create. And when you want to create, you have to find time to create on yeah. top of being a dad Yep. writing business because this yeah. is a whole business now you got the, the setup which i admire again you got 10 shows going out of there you, you know you're smoking you, your employees are giggling <laughs> everybody's high at 8 30 in the morning stay high yeah. they're eating donuts they got tacos fucking donuts you know i mean that's a it as an artist's point of view you have the perfect artist's life which is what used to happen in this city, as far as we were concerned. See, as a comedian, what you did was, Be Real got a show. Be Real called two weeks ago. You said he met you at a restaurant. He wants you to be a garbage man in this show. Be Real's going to give you six episodes out of 13 every year. That means for fucking eight weeks, I'm not going to do dick. <laughs> two, two times a yeah. For six weeks, I'm just going to focus on Be Real show. Right. Well, I got to call Be Real and tell Be Real Real. They got to shoot me out Tuesday because I got a gig in Philadelphia on Thursday. And guess what? I'm not going to be effective on your show, and I'm not going to be effective in Philadelphia because I'm thinking about both things. Right. Let me just focus on Be Real thing. Kill that shit. So the next season, that motherfucker brings me back for eight shows a season. <laughs> right. So you had that breather. In today's comedic world, you don't have that no more. Yeah. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.